Hi everybody, I'm Rachel from Rachel Cooks with Love. Today I'm going to be making Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches. My copycat version. And it's delicious and super easy. Let's get started. So I've got two chicken breasts here and they were pretty large. And so what I did was I went ahead and cut them in half. And now I'm going to fillet them this way so that they're not so thick because you don't really want to use real thick pieces of chicken because it takes longer to cook. Besides, the Chick-fil-A sandwiches are not that thick. So what I'm going to do is, you see this is what I did. I had the, the large filet, I think it was, I think it was this one right here. You see it was just, it was just a big fat chicken breast. So I just cut it in half like that and now I'm going to fillet it in half. So I put my hand over it like this and I just very carefully with a very sharp knife you just want to take it all the way like this. Like that. See? And I think I'm going to leave this one alone because it's not so thick. Now this one was pretty thick. And... I've done this, these already, and these are fine, you see? This is how you want them to be. After I have filleted them like that, I'm gonna go ahead and pound them down a little bit so that they're not so thick. So I put them in a little Ziploc bag like this, and in this, Ziploc bag, I'll just pound them. I start from the center like this, and I take it out this way. And you don't want to pound it really, really hard, because if you pound it real hard, you can actually tear it, you know. And that's good. See? It's just a good size like that. I'll put another one in here. Just stretch it out. And you see, after you pound it, if you feel like the piece is real small, but as long as it's nice and thick, once you start to pound it, you start stretching it, so you make it a little bit bigger. Here's another one. See? Now that I have pounded my chicken just to the size that I want, I'm going to go ahead and marinate them for about 30 minutes, but I'm going to brine them first. So now a lot of people that copycat the Chick-fil-A recipe use pickle juice. Now I don't think anybody really knows whether Chick-fil-A really does use pickle juice or not. Some people say they don't, but you know what, I tried it with just a regular brine of salt and water. And then I tried it with a pickle juice brine, and it was just so delicious and perfect. So I said, why not? I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got my chicken in here, and I'm going to go ahead and pour some pickle juice in here. Just enough to, to just make sure that they're covered up pretty good like that. Now I've got a little bit of spices in here. I mixed in half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, and half a teaspoon of white pepper. And I'm going to pour a little bit of those spices in here. Those are optional. I've tried it and I like it. I just think that it really takes that good, you know, seasoning taste from the inside all the way out. And then I'm going to put in just a little bit of water. Just like that. Because I noticed that with too much pickle juice, sometimes a chicken would get, you know, almost like a little bit torn down too much. So I added a little bit of water just to, you know, neutralize that a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave them like this, as you can see with the seasoning and the pickle juice. And I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. And I'm gonna get ready with my seasoning and my flour for the breading. Now that my chicken has been marinating in the refrigerator in the brine, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my dry mixture. I'm gonna be using one cup of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of powdered sugar, 
one teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of white pepper, half a teaspoon of celery salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and one teaspoon of MSG. I'm going to dump them all in here in my bowl. So here's my flour, my sugar, my salt, my paprika, my pepper, celery salt, my garlic powder, and my MSG. I'm going to mix them up really good together. So I've got my seasoning mixture all mixed and ready to go. As you can see, I'm going to fix my egg wash. I've got one fourth cup of milk and I've got one egg. So I'm going to beat my egg real good right here. Now that my egg is all nice and beaten there, I'm going to dump it into my milk. Just mix it up really good like this. Just like that. Now I'm going to use this dish because I want something that's shaped like this because I really want to be able to work that chicken in here and this is going to be too small. So here is my chicken. It's been in the brine for about 35 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and get it just directly out of the brine just like that. And I'm just going to dip it into my egg mixture like this and bring it over here to my flour mixture. Now what they do at Chick-fil-A is that they really press it in. I've noticed they do that. So I'm going to do it too. They don't pound it, they just press it down. Just like that. Put it on the plate right there. Do another one. See, and I've noticed that when I'm doing this, you know, some of the wet liquid is in there and it makes these little clumps right there. And I like those little clumps because that's what gives it a real crispy look. So this is my last piece right here. Just like that. So I've got all my pieces right here. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands and then we're going to get ready to fry them. So I'm going to be using my Cool Daddy deep fryer. If you don't have a deep fryer, you can use a regular large cast iron skillet. I've done that before too. And you can put in about one inch of peanut oil. You can use canola oil. 
but since I've got a deep fryer, I'm going to go ahead and use this. And the same amount of oil that fits in here fits in a large cast iron skillet, so it really doesn't matter which way you go. So I've got it nice and hot here, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and have one piece dropped in there. I'm going to drop one piece in real slowly like this. And I like to just dip it in a little bit and bring it up. And then I'm going to just put it in there. Now you do, I have it set at about 325. You don't want it real hot because if it's very, very hot, the outside crust will get real dark really quick when your chicken inside is not ready yet. So I'd like to do it slow so it'll be a pretty golden color. Can you see the way it's bubbling? It's not roaring. It's just, just the way I want it to be. And I'm going to go ahead and fry it for about four minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over. See how pretty they're looking? I've got about a minute and a half to go. So my timer just went off. I'm gonna go ahead and get them out. It's been four minutes. I was gonna tell you that if the pieces are small and not too thick, they're about four minutes. If they're thicker and bigger, you would go about five. You can go all the way up to seven, depending on the size of your chicken. Ooh, they smell so delicious, exactly like a chicken patty from Chick-fil-A. I've had those so many times, you know, that I just know the taste. And I played around with the recipe, you know, taking this off and putting that on, and from black pepper to white pepper since I didn't see the specs. And I just played around with more paprika and little paprika until I think it came out just right. Since my chicken is very hot right now, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my buns. Now I'm going to butter my buns because that's how they do it. Chick-fil-A, I'm sure, butters their hamburger buns like this.
and I've got my griddle real nice and hot right here and I'm gonna go ahead and toast them because that's how they do it just like that and while they're toasting I'm gonna prepare my sauce I'm gonna be using mayonnaise and I have made this sauce so many times and I think I got it just right I'm gonna do about half a cup of mayonnaise even if you go over it's still so delicious so you don't have to have the exact measurements just a more or less I'm gonna do about half a cup of mayo like this Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get this done because I'm so hungry. I've been waiting for this all day. I'm going to do three tablespoons of honey. And you can use any type of honey that you want. There's two. And there's a heaping three. Just like that. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong if you go over just a little bit. I'm going to be doing two tablespoons of lemon juice. I didn't have fresh lemons or I would have done that. You know, you don't want to be going out that much nowadays. And I'm going to do two tablespoons of mustard, just regular yellow mustard. And then I'm going to be doing two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. And I love the sweet baby rays. So I'm going to be doing two of these. Just like that. And mix these up really good. And I think this is going to be perfect. It always is. Oh my goodness. If I close my eyes, I would think I was tasting the one from Chick-fil-A. It is so perfect. Oh, and I think my buns are ready. See, nice and toasty. Now, they only use two pickles. I've noticed that they put two pickles in there. I'm going to put some of this sauce. Just like that. And you want some nice thick pickle slices? Because that's what they use. I've used different kinds and they're all good. I'm going to put four slices. And then I'm going to get me a piece of the chicken. I think I'll use this one. See? It's like that. Ooh, and look at what I made. Some of the waffle fries. <laughs> You got to go all out. You gotta, if you're going to do it, you got to do it, right? So now, I'm going to put some of this sauce here. Because it is so heavenly. Here you go. See, this is my copycat Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. So now for the taste test. Turn around this way.
Mm. 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 This is delicious. Mm. If you haven't subscribed, please do share with your friends only if you want to. Send me a message. Thank you.